what is the biggest minotaur you faced in your life? Uh, I think the biggest minotaur I've faced in my life is giving up um, or moving, transitioning from the corporate career that I had into the charity sector, um, which was not um, quite unknown to me, but uh, definitely uh, had no uh, prior experience to it uh, before joining it. Brilliant. And um, we'll, we'll unpack that because, you know, I think there's quite um, some stories behind why that was the biggest challenge. But before we get into that, I'd like to welcome everyone to another episode of the Minotaur's Maze podcast. My guest today is Kasif Shavir, who has over 15 years experience in the social impact and charity sector. He used to be the CEO of Muslim Aid, which is one of the oldest faith-based NGOs in the UK. He has worked for and helped found several Muslim charities, including the National Zakat Foundation and Charity Right, and has had leadership positions in some of the largest mainstream charities, including Oxfam and the British Red Cross. Kashif sits on several advisory boards, including Bond, the largest network of organizations working in the international development and Muslim Aid USA. He is the founder of Ethical Consulting Group, where he works with charities, family offices, and government agencies to improve their effectiveness and maximize their social impact through strategic philanthropy. Kashif, thank you for being here and welcome. Thank you for inviting me, Zufka. Nice to, nice to be here. Brilliant. I mean, that was quite a comprehensive introduction. Is there anything you'd like to add to that and <laughs> before we, uh, we dive deep into this uh, conversation? No, no, nothing to add. I'm sure. I'm sure the the truth will come out during the during <laughs> during the interview. Brilliant. Now, obviously, you mentioned your biggest minotaur being the transition from corporate to charity, and this is interesting to me on a personal level as well because you know we always a lot of us have this desire to do charitable work, to do good work. I mean, I have thought about leaving the corporate. I mean, I did leave the corporate world eventually, but um, I did. Uh, you know, dream about leaving the corporate world to do charity. Um, but I suppose it's not as easy as it sounds. So can you unpack that a little bit? What was, you know, the the, the, the fear or what was the obstacles or why was it such a difficult transition for you? Um, I think, uh, uh, I think, look, I think career change in any sector to any sector uh, or different sector is always, is always difficult. The uh, the um, the complexities or, or why this particular one was uh, diff- difficult on many levels. One was obviously I was I was very successful in in the corporate sector. You know, I'd, at a young age I joined a, a, a multinational. They were flying me around the world. I was on a leadership program. The money was good, um, and all of that good stuff. Um, and, and and quite frankly, Islamic. I mean, you know, there, there was the, the I was more conscious of my my religion by that time already um and they were, they, you know it, it was well in line with my islamic values and and ethos as well so uh, you know I, I owe a lot to that and alhamdulillah uh, that was very merciful um and so yeah so when you're when you when you've tasted success in a certain area and you know that you could potentially make more uh in that area both individually personally career wise financially um, and then you're making a transition to something that um, definitely doesn't pay as much <laughs> for a start, um, you know. Um, and 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 by that time, obviously, we had a family, so uh, we had uh, two of our four children at that point. You know, married and 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 all the things that go along with uh, having a family and 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 a growing family. Uh, we had two more children after that, um, so it had to be something that had to be done as a family. It wasn't just a a individual call that I could make. You know, I wasn't a, a single person only looking after myself. Um, that those kind of considerations had to be taken into account. So, both from a professional perspective, where you know I'm going into a sector, I'm not necessarily known in. I'm not. I don't even know if I'll be good at it. Um, and 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 pretty much starting again at a later age in life, and building that, and and also financially, and what impact that would have. On the family, etc., and um, uh, I, I think, uh, uh, alhamdulillah, I think my my intentions behind it were were, and and this is really what kind of moved me through it, 
is my intentions behind it was always to do more good. Like, you know, I'd, I'd been involved in charity work, um, like we all are as volunteers. We try to do our bit on, on the side, etc. Um, and those commitments were just getting bigger and bigger. And I thought to myself, look, either I'm going to commit myself to some of this work full time, or I can continue doing it part time. And, 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 and inshallah, that, that would be enough as well and grow my career. I decided on the on the former and said, you know, I, I need to give more time to this if I need to make it successful. And and alhamdulillah, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the transition easy, number one. Number two, uh, my family, who I'm immensely grateful for, um, supported me in that decision-making process. And um, I can honestly say we, we, you know, we didn't feel the impact of it, you know. And, and I think that's largely because the intentions behind it were, uh, were 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 good were good you know uh, I I wanted to do good uh, or more good um oh I thought I could contribute and add value to the charity sector and um and uh, I asked Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to facilitate that journey for me quite frankly and he did and um and yeah here we are <laughs> to, 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 um it's brilliant because obviously that's the theme of this podcast obviously is conquering your mind towards uh, for the sake of a mission or a cause that's bigger than mm. yourself, so obviously this was a mission or cause, which uh, uh, was you know bigger than yourself or something you were passionate about. So when obviously with this successful corporate career, I think you know you were you were in Silicon Valley for for a number of years. Yeah, twelve years, twelve plus years. Yeah, twelve plus years in in Silicon Valley. So um, you know you're traveling around the world. Obviously financially it's, it's good. Was it? solely then that transition because you wanted to do more good or was there uh, an element of you, you don't really like the corporate life it's not no i, I mean no yeah, good question very good question i mean you know i i can't say I, I, there was anything like i said i mean the work i was involved in on a day-to-day -day basis um was was quite quite ethical in, in in from an islamic point of view like you know there wasn't anything there that was quite frankly disturbing me i think there were general things there, like, you know, when you sleep at night and you're thinking, well, am I actually contributing to, am I making the world a better place by working in where I'm working? But uh, my day-to-day -day role didn't involve me, I guess, quote-unquote, doing anything haram or unethical that that, that questioned uh, my my lifestyle. It was just about, you know, like you said, uh, probably the latter, that, that um, you know, uh, as, as some individuals feel, and I, I did feel at that time, that I could add more value to 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 the community and uh, by doing by transferring some of those skills that I was learning from the corporate sector into into the charity sector, um, and that was kind of like the drive, um, just to be uh, able to feel a bit more that you're adding a bit more value uh, and 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 maybe leaving something better behind than um, yeah than 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 getting people more mobile phones in their hands. Mm. Well, you swap some here. Yeah, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. So. What was that first step then you took when you made that transition? You you you, you obviously made the decision. There's been a lot of sacrifice mm -hmm. involved. Um, and to give us some context behind this question, it's like every time I considered it, I obviously didn't go ahead with it because when I well, didn't know what I would, uh, what I would do, how I would do it, how would I be of use. Mm -hmm. So somebody was probably going through something similar right now. They've got a sort of mm -hmm. opera career, but they're untold themselves. They're not happy. They want to do more good. They want to do charity work. What would be that first step? Uh, for them, based on your experience, um, look, uh, I, every, uh, they, they, look, uh, what I've realised, and maybe I'm a bit older now, right? This is like 15 years on, right? After I've made the call, is whichever way you break this down, it's gonna, it's a leap of faith. You could do the, as much planning as possible, and you're like, okay, you know what? I can wait until I pick up two or three clients. I've got a certain amount of money coming in, and then I'm gonna make the leap. Or you know what? Um, I just some people are like I'll make the leap and and that will force me to 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 do the things that I need to do to make that work. Um, uh, so uh, uh, with the be with the best of planning, I can say, only because I've spoken to so many people, mashallah tabarakallah, since doing that. I, I, you know, I do coaching on, like when I can. Um, at the end of it, it does always involve a, a level of leap of faith. Leap of faith. And what I mean by that is for some people, it's not such a big leap of faith. Like, um, I was already involved in charity work. I'd already established uh, at least one charity by that time. And I, and, and I, 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 I raised enough um, equity, personal equity in that 
in in uh, amongst the sector and um, that i i felt at least a little bit confident that i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go hungry or my family's not gonna go hungry the next day right there was enough people out there that said like we'll give you something it's not going to be as much as you're earning it's not going to be as much as you're getting right now but there's something there for you if you decide to take this leap of faith so for others that leap of faith might be a lot bigger they don't know that there is nothing promised on the other side right or at least guaranteed um but either way there's a leap of faith involved and you have to at some point just say no this is what i'm going to do with the rest of my life this is what i'm going to commit myself to and if if inshallah if you have your faith in God and, and, and you believe you're doing it for the right reason, even if it's, you know, increasing your risk um, and, and feeding your family, which is a good a reason as anything else. It doesn't have to be some grandiose vision about saving the, the, the Muslim Ummah or, or humanity at large. Uh, that's a noble reason in and of itself to be independent and, and uh, of other people and, and feed your family. It still requires a leap of faith. And I think that that's the conclusion I've come to and that's the advice I give to people is that I can sit here all day long and say plan it like this, do it like this but at the end of the day Zulfiqar is going to have to make a call yeah, they're going to have to make a call and and you need to build yourself up and uh, you need to tackle those things maybe these minor minor tours up to the big minor tour <laughs> that, 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 that you need to build yourself up to making that call you know um, there are things that will make you a little bit more confident when you make that call, but at the end of the day, you will have to make that call, um, and and that that does require courage. That does require uh, a, a level of uh, um, yeah. Quite frankly, I think it's it is courage. Um, but I, I think that's where our faith comes in. Personally, that's where I think our faith comes in. You know, I prayed a lot. I mean, I prayed this to God a million times. You know, I mean, I asked Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. I mean, I'd go to Umrah. I mean, I mean, I'd ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala there at the door, like. The, just guide me towards making me more useful to the Ummah. Just guide me towards making me more useful to the Ummah. Yeah, you know I mean, and and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala found me a way to do that, um, or multiple ways to do that, even after after that fact. But it still required me to make the call. I can make du'a as much as I want. I still have to go home and say, okay, you know what? I'm going to put this on the line and finally go for it. And 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 I think for you and your listeners, I think it's very easy, uh, for, uh, something that I want to make clear. I have made multiple life-changing decision since then right. and every time it's made it easier because of the one that i made the first time i you have to leave some of it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as long as your intention is correct and you're you, you believe you're doing the right thing and you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance you can make those calls not just once you can do it every single time you know you can do it every single time and, and i've done it more than once <laughs> brilliant and um, I mean, of you, you just mentioned you've made multiple life-changing uh, decisions since then. I'm, I'm sure we'll get into some of those. Um, so, obviously, when you then move into the charity sector, um, I'm assuming you had to move countries, your family had to move countries. What was that period like of, you know, I suppose, transition, adapting? Like, how were you feeling from a, from a mental point of view? Did you ever have any regrets, doubts? Did you ever think, you know, what have I done? Do I need to go back? How are how you feeling from a mental point of view? Why is he going through that? Well, I mean, I've never felt bad. I've never, I've, I've mentally, I've, or, and and uh, in any other way, I've never, never ever questioned going back. And the reason why is because I asked for Allah's guidance to take me to that place in the first place. So, you know, um, from our faith, we understand that once you've once you've done that and you put your trust in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, wherever He takes you from that point, you believe that that's the right thing for you to do, even if you think. It didn't work out the way that you thought it worked out. Do you get my point? What does Allah SWT say when you pray the istikara dua? Allah SWT make this, facilitate this decision for me, make it good for me, make it good for my family, or give me something else instead of it. If at the end of that I ended up in a place, a, a situation, a job, after praying that dua and you believe that that dua, Allah SWT is listening to that, 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 that specific wording, then you have to believe that that is the best place for you to be, regardless of how it's worked out. Because maybe Allah SWT is planning something for you that is better, that experience would have taught you something. We don't know, right? That's the infinite wisdom of Allah SWT. So no, I I think because of that, because the decisions have always, not always, but once I started, like I said, being more conscious of my, my, my religion, that when I've made a decision based off of that, there's been no regrets and there shouldn't be no regrets. 
um, and and some of those decisions haven't worked out the way I would have liked them to, you know. But because I made it after asking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's guidance, I believe that there's some good in it, and I might not see that good, but but it, but no regrets, inshallah, no regrets at all. Obviously, once you've gone into the charity sector, uh, I'm sure there's a hundred and one different challenges, but. From from an outsider perspective, you know, um, the, the feeling is, yeah, once I start doing charity work, I'm going to start feeling a lot more fulfilled and satisfied. Um, and life's going to be good. But what are the actual realities of going <laughs> charity work? Uh, is it, well, is it all rosy and peaches or is it a lot more difficult or is it a different set of challenges? Can you explain some of those uh, challenges and, and then that process? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, it, it's everything that you would just mention. <laughs> everything. There, there's the rosy side of it, and and satisfaction side of it. And you go to sleep some days, and um, and you, and you're like, yeah, you know what? I signed a check today that's going to feed, you know, half a million orphans, and and or or like you know, uh, some uh, project that you've signed off on, or or been involved with, or had some contribution towards. Um, at some level, um, uh, halfway across the world and stuff, and you know, of course, there, there's no denying that that's a good feeling to have, and 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 I'm sure it's a better feeling to have than I don't know someone who's not contributing to to those that kind of work at the end of the day. Not that whatever else you're doing is bad, but you know, it comes with a certain level of job satisfaction. Um, but I guess my main, but 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 at the level that I was working at, remember, I went into charity sector already as pretty much executive level or a management level right so i i i really I, I, apart from when i was a volunteer um which i still do now and, and all of us do like you know unless you're getting someone you're helping someone pack boxes or you know the 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 the, the volunteer level i've always come into to the proper charity level at the uh, a management level of some sort and 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 that level fortunately unfortunately means you're coming across the same challenges that any other business or any other work kind of comes. You meet people that you like, you meet people that you don't like, you you know, you have you have issues with the different departments, you know, you're managing IT, you're managing HR, you're managing uh, uh, finance, you're managing uh, budgets, you, you know, and wh whatever type of large organization you're in, especially multi-million pound organizations, um, the same problems exist. Sometimes they have more zeros at the end of your problems. Sometimes they have less zeros <laughs> at the end of your problem. You know, some, sometimes it's one person playing up in the organization. Sometimes it's a whole team that's not performing. So in that regard, um, I would I would say that there isn't much difference. There, there's a lot of people in the charity sector. All of them are trying to do their good, the, the, the best that they can do. They're trying to do their thing. Um, and alhamdulillah that that's quite clear like the intentions behind all of these things are uh, uh, are obviously very different to someone working for profit hmm. uh, but at the end of the day everyone's they're the same people they're, they're you know they're good intentioned people um, and the challenges are, are quite frankly not any different you know they're not any different uh, but yeah the, the 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 benefit of it is that you're solving those challenges for a completely different intention you know, you know. I, if I solve this challenge, I'm not going to get a bonus at the end of the year as regards a financial payoff. But what I will do is make sure I don't know that project runs more successfully, or it feeds one put one more person than it was supposed to, or you know, I, I've saved uh, do, uh, donors money on 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 some aspects. So the intention or the reward for coming for solving that problem is very different compared to. You know, outside of the charity center. Mm. I hope that makes sense. No, it does. It does, and I think um, what's interesting is a lot of people wouldn't associate charity with running a business. But I suppose from uh, you know what you're saying is that there are a lot of similarities. And if you want to run a successful charity, you do have to run it like a successful business, I suppose. And, um, so obviously, you worked in a number of organisations. You've led some. Can you talk about maybe a specific? project or something you did where it was particularly uh, stressful from you on a personal level like what happened what did you do and and why was it so stressful and and, and almost mentally taxing for you yeah sure uh, before I said I, I just want to clarify something I, I don't I don't want to 
upset anybody or, or, or give the message out that running charities is like running a business because it obviously it isn't. What I meant by saying that, uh, just to clarify, is that the components of a large charity are the same components that you have in any any business. So managing those components is very similar, right? So like I said, if you have, you have a HR department, an IT department, a program department, a products department, just like you would have, and managing all of those components requires you to have the skill set or the the thing that 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 you would require in any business. And 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 I think just to finish that discussion, uh, one of the major things that we were lacking, and and maybe in some cases we still are in the charity sector, is that we do have people managing some of these organisations that have never done that before. Mm. You know. Um, they've li- they've largely come from the the volunteering sector or or, or managing countries country directors, um, but they've you know going back uh, like when I came in to do charity work and I started getting bigger and bigger positions I went back and done an MBA in 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 management right because I I started to feel that I wasn't um, equipped for some of these larger roles. And you know that I was that I was being offered, even though I was being offered them, and I could have taken them, and I did take some of them without the MBA. Um, but you know there has to be this self reflection that do I have the skill set, you know, to manage a multi million pound organization? I've never done that before. I've never managed a number this many people before. So I felt that I didn't have the competency. I went back and I done the MBA, and I think this is what I'm just trying to be, a try, the message I was trying to get across. In short. Yeah. No, no, that makes a lot more sense. Yes. Just to clarify, before someone tells me, look, I told you these guys are running charities like business. And then... <laughs> because there's a lot of emotional triggers um, attached to charity work and, and charity, and we, we will get onto that. Uh, all we do, obviously, you've gone on this journey into the charity sector. You're running some big organizations. You're having yeah. difficult decisions. Yeah. Well, look, yeah, and, and, yeah, that question. So, yeah, let's come on to that one. So, look, I mean, by far, I mean, I think there's no... There's no um, Experience wise, there's no competition in my career. Like that, obviously, the largest challenge was when, when I did take over Muslim Aid. We were in a, a difficult position at that time, um, and uh, and I, like I guess every, I mean, it's a it's a very old charity. It's like the old oldest charity in the country, uh, bar uh, Islamic Relief. They were both started literally within months of each other. So you can say it's the oldest charity, oldest first based charity in the country, uh, with Islamic Relief and. And obviously, just like most old companies or, or, or companies that have been around for a long time, you know, they, you know, they have ups and downs, and 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 you know, new, uh, you know, you have new boards, you have new teams, etc. And that's similar across that line over a period of time. It didn't happen overnight. No, none of these issues normally do. But over a period of time, a, a lot of things had had kind of like gathered up. And I'd come in there, come in there initially as a, a director of transformation and strategy under the previous CEO, um, and so they did bring me in to help, you know, to solve. What the current challenges were, um, I ended up as the CEO, um, and then when I did, you know, we had to do like basically a, a restructuring of the organisation, um, and for someone um, that hadn't, I guess, gone through uh, with any previous charity or all of that size, so like I'd been with bigger charities with Red Cross, etc., um, but suddenly uh, being confronted with having to restructure, i.e. laying people off, um, you know, that was, that, it was a very tough time. Like, I mean, having those conversations where you're uh, uh, impacting individuals' lives, no matter even if they're a good person, they're good at their job or bad at their job, you know, uh, uh, obviously, you know, it's easier to get rid of someone if they're not good at their job. But, but, but nonetheless, it was, you know, the, the emotional toil that it took on myself, someone like myself, and I, and I think that was one of the reasons why uh, I ended up did uh, one of the reasons that contribute towards me stepping down uh, after the job was done, and we did get it to a much better situation. Uh, was I realised that look, you know, even though I managed to do it, and people were, and I went around the country talking about how I'd done it, and people were, you know, pr- uh, not praising but you know inviting me to conferences to speak about the transformation and the restructure and how we got them to here to there, etc. Uh, it didn't mean that I enjoyed it, you know. It didn't mean I enjoyed it at all, and and I think that was a a, um, a very difficult time managing those emotions, um, and uh, knowing that you were doing this for the good of the charity survival. Still, you know, it, it made 
it's, it, it didn't make the work any easier. You know, I wasn't doing this for profit, right? Like at the end of it, I didn't, uh, I didn't make Musi made like another 10 million quid that Gashi was going to get 10% bonus from. <laughs> at the end, I got paid the same. The people that were there got paid the same. But, you know, there was a whole lot of people that, that we had to let go. Um, and that emotional toil, going through that process, the, you know, the, and doing it properly, making sure you're acting in a fair way. Um, yeah, that, that, that was, that was very emotionally uh, testing. Um, okay. So, so yeah. why were you, why were these people being let go? Was it because, um, they were good at that? Yeah, it was just, a, it was a restructure. You know, we had to look at, um, uh, making the, the, the organization more fit for purpose. Um, you know, and uh, for anyone who's managed organizations, any type of organization, you know, you've got a certain amount of money go coming in, you've got a certain amount of money going out, you're, you're trying and, and, and you have to, and sometimes when that gets out of balance, uh, you look at your, your, your resources and you say, okay, you know what, you know, to bring that balance back into the organization, you're going to have to do this. I mean, it's not only people we have to let go, right? We have to stop work in certain countries or, or not, uh, uh, or, or have offices in, in certain countries where the programs were not as effective or, or, or maybe, uh, returning the, the donor satisfaction that we would, we wanted to go forward with. Um, so it was just this amalgamation of let's try to do less, but let's try to do that, that better. You know, let's try to focus, uh, bring some focus into our strategy, um, and, and, and make, uh, yeah, and, and focus on the quality and not, and, and maybe uh, we were spread a little bit too thin in some areas, um, which meant that the quality in certain areas was dropping. So let's, go, let, let's let go of those areas that we're not doing good at. And, we, and if you let go of some of those areas, obviously, um, if you don't have anywhere to put those people in, um, then, you know, that unfortunately, we have to let them go. So, mm. um, so yeah, it's just rebalancing. Um, that that often happens based on what direction you want the organization to go in. Yeah. You 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 wish you had enough space in the organization to reassign those people. Yeah, you know that that would be the ideal scenario. Uh, but most organizations are not that big. If you're letting go of so many people, if you're letting go of a few people, you can reassign them. But um, but most organizations, you know, you can't when you're doing a restructure, you can't reassign everybody. You know? Uh, I'm move on. I just want to dive deeper into that. Obviously, you know, you, you, you go through this emotional time, but what were some of those emotions? What were some of those thoughts at the time that were going through your head? Like, um, you know, can you walk through that? And then how did you deal with those emotions to make those decisions which were needed to be made? Well, yeah, just, just continuously asking yourself, are you good enough? You know, are you doing the right thing? Yeah, I mean, are you good enough? Are you doing the right thing? Is your, are your intentions here uh, um, uh, clear? Uh, uh, as in, they're not influenced by a personal um, uh, feeling rather than professional ones. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're just continuously asking those things, and uh, and especially the first one. I mean, to be quite frank, like yeah, though the you always are you know, I was all am I good enough? Am I good enough to do what I'm doing? Do you know, am, am I making the right calls? Um and then, you know, and, and how did I get over it? Like, yeah, you just you surround yourself with two things. Obviously once like one I said, like I said, you know, it did build a, my personal relationship up with God a lot more, a lot more stronger. Because I was turning to him a lot more. I was turning to him um uh, for his guidance and help and speaking to him. So from a personal level, that that relationship grew stronger because of that. And maybe that's why Allah SWT put me through that situation, right? That's what he does with some of his slaves, uh, for sure. Um, number one. Number two, surround yourself with good mentors, good people to speak to. You know, it drove me. Like, you know, I went back and done a, this coaching certification, executive coaching certification, uh, because how much it, there was, how, how useful people it was to have certain people around you that you could pick up the phone to that were not related to your work and say, you know, cry on the phone with them or, or, or lay it out with them or do what you want to do and say that, hey, look, look, you know what, I just need someone to talk to that's not involved in this um, and, and take it out. So I think those two things, faith and, and having faithful people around you that, that can give you good advice or that you can be open and transparent with um, was, was probably... 
you know, by the way, all of this happened in the pandemic. So, wow. Okay. Yes, thank you. Right. Uh, <laughs> so the pandemic hit literally a, a month or two months after I joined Muslim Maid. So, um, so yeah, the, <laughs> it was, yeah, yeah. You know, there's quite things you made. I mean, if you wanted to meet someone, I couldn't meet people. I had to, uh, I had to do it over the, over the phone and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. So I know you, you mentioned that you picked up the phone and, and maybe you had a cry with some. That's something not typically associated with our community. Like um, I know there's a mental health discussion going on right now um, around the world, but typically in our community, we tend to keep it botched up. We don't talk, talk yeah, yeah. And share these, and we don't show them kind of emotions. So yeah. is that changing now in your experience or is that something still that yeah i think uh, well i think so and i mean look even even my own appreciation of it you know you kind of like you said you 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 downplay when someone says oh you know so and so's done so such and such thing especially not now but maybe four or five years ago maybe even longer and and people used to bring up mental health as an excuse or as a as an explanation for, for things you kind of downplayed it or in uh, i guess uh, even in some circles you kind of like even made fun of it Mm. Um, but absolutely, like when you're going through that yourself, um, and and I, I and look, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say I had a complete breakdown or anything like that. Maybe I was close, um, and I had emotional outbursts. But but you know, the, the, I I don't think I can put myself in that category. But um, but it definitely gave me uh, an appreciation of how much your mental state can affect your personal performance, your relationships, family. I mean, I, I'm saying I wasn't affected. I, I'm pretty sure if you spoke to my wife. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I think I'm pretty sure if you spoke to my wife, um, uh, my children, they'll be like, absolutely, we could tell, we could tell the difference between when dad was going through that scenario, that that um, period of time versus another period of time. Um, well, some of my kids might say like he's like that all the time, you know. <laughs> but 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 jokes aside, yeah, like I, they definitely saw the difference. Like my wife definitely told me that the. You know what? There's the you know you're not the same and stuff and and um, you can relate that to that period of time and or, uh, the pandemic as well. Obviously, brought a lot of different kind of things around. But but yeah, I absolutely look. I, I I'm a I'm I'm much more appreciative of of that fact now that that how much of your mental state can affect these things. Um, it's made me a much more self-aware person um, as well. And uh, and I think all, uh, uh, we could all probably benefit from just being a bit more self-aware and knowing the things that 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 mentally trigger you to be um, to react in a certain way or not. Yeah, absolutely. Great. So, touching upon something you mentioned earlier, obviously there's a uh, many trigger points when it comes to charities. Uh, I know we, we talked a little bit about it's not really a business, but you know there are obviously crossovers. Um, I suppose a lot of charity. There are a lot of charities out there in the first place, and secondly, there's a lot of scandals around charities. Um, you know, they, they come out, and I suppose the big question that people have today is: Can they trust charities to do the right thing? Now, Probably. it might not necessarily always be a deliberate fraudulent um, attempt on on the base of charity. It might just be negligence, or maybe just a lack of skill. Um, but how did you deal with some of the negative connotations that charities get? Uh, and is it still prevalent today? Is it merited or is it unfair? Um, no, I think we're definitely unfair. Um, definitely unfair. Oh, the three choices that you gave me. Um, I think, you know, from the very, you know, um, uh, you know, your your the basic premise that there's a lot of scandals out there. There isn't. There isn't a lot of scandals out there. So let's put it into context. You know, uh, is there more is there more scandals out there compared to any other sector? No, um, I know that because you can do the research and and and, uh, and and back up. Even in the Muslim charity sector, specifically, uh, compare that to the non-Muslim charity sector or the non-faith sector, whatever you want to call it, uh, the non-Muslim sector. Um, is there more more than average? No, there is. Yeah, look, yeah, the information is public. You can go to the Charity Commission's website. You can look at all the active investigations that are currently happening in the sector, and you can pick out the ones that are Muslim or non-Muslim, right? So, so um, 
the 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 difference is, and and you know, we don't need to go into conspiracy theories and stuff. Is that obviously when something happens in the Muslim charity sector, um, it gets amplified, um, you know, a hundred times more, right? What is the biggest scandal that you can think of that has ever happened? In the Muslim charity sector, you don't have to actually say anything before you start thinking about uh, versus versus the biggest scandal that's ever happened in the the or the uh, non-Muslim charity sector or the non-faith based sector. They don't even come close. Don't come close. I mean, you know, I'm not going to name charities, but look, look, just look at the things. I mean, the mo- the most that we get done with is like there's a battle on the board. Someone's done something stupid, said something that should they shouldn't have had. And it gets exemplified or amplified in the media, etc. But embezzle, embezzlement, uh, sexual harassment, uh, um, you know, um, I don't know, all of this crazy stuff that 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 does that is quote unquote scandalous. No, I've, no, you know, in my 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 experience in the last twenty years working in it and people before me, we've never been hit with that kind of scandal. And inshallah, Allah SWT knows best, but I don't think we ever are right, going to get hit with those kind of scandals. Um, for two reasons, uh, and this to answer your second part of your question. One of the reasons why one of the reasons why they get exempted is because obviously we, I, I believe, and, and I think we would, I, I think we would agree, inshallah, um, that we held ourselves to a much higher standard. We, you know, charity to us as Muslims and the Muslim community is so entwined with our faith and our beliefs and the way that we are. It's not giving a donation of a five or a tenner, that, you know, which is what, unfortunately, the West has kind of like, you know, reduced charity, charity, charity to. Look, the word doesn't exist in the Arabic vocabulary. Mm. Right? The word, like, you know, the, what's the closest we come to? Zakat. Zakat ain't charity. Yes, and sadaka, sadaka ain't charity. Prophet said, smiling is sadaka. So how can you define that as charity? Yeah. So my point is that you know we, when you're when you're talking about charity as in giving donations, that we hold us our 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 definition of charity is so wide. Number one, number two, our de- our, our our charity or whatever you want to call it is so entwined with our faith. We become very emotionally attached, like we should be, in to this work. So when we hear about the smallest things, yeah, that go wrong or we have doubts, yeah, we react. I'm not saying we shouldn't react. I'm not saying we shouldn't. All I'm saying is that there's other reasons why we hold ourselves to a higher account and, and there are legitimate reasons. And and because we do that, we look worse. Um, we, we normally do bring that out in public against each other. Uh, it looks like we're the only scandal in the whole world, whereas we might be uh, not even registered on the on on anyone's radar apart from our own our own. Um, and and what that has done, obviously, is is driven the charity sector, especially the Muslim charity sector, to quite frankly heights that that they are it is unsustainable to uphold. Right. Okay. Do you understand? So 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 we started we start saying things to uh, please this higher standard we start saying things like it doesn't cost us to do anything <laughs> it doesn't cost us anything to do this work for you <laughs> you know the whole zero percent and this and that so you know we're, we're because we've start we've set the standard for ourselves um and i'm not saying there isn't ways to do zero percent by the way you know the, the but not making it transparent that actually what you're saying is it's not zero percent it's not zero this doing this work doesn't cost you nothing it costs you something, but we're covering that cost maybe from somewhere else. So I'm not taking it out of Zulfiqar's one pound donation. Uh, I'm taking it out of Kashif's one pound donation because he said we can use that for that admin cost. And Zulfiqar saying he can't use that for from his donation. So one thing, I'm not saying that there's no way to do zero percent. My point is that because we're holding ourselves to a higher standard, then then charities are reacting and trying to appease. Uh, that uh, the 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 masses, and instead of trying to educate the masses, quite frankly, mm-hmm. on what it takes to do good work, what it takes to actually have that impact, um, so that um, people understand better. And I, I'm delighted. I think we are making some progress there. Um, but we, the charities, need to do more to be more transparent in telling people what it takes to actually do their work, what it actually costs to do their work, even if they're not going to charge 
Zulfiqar to do to pay for that. They should let Zulfiqar know that, by the way, it's costing us 25p to distribute your pound. We're not charging you for it, but we're letting you know. So that when another charity says, Zulfiqar, give us pound twenty-five to do this work, Zulfiqar knows that, okay, you know what? I know it's, those guys are charging me one pound and covering the 25p themselves. These guys are charging me the 25p. So Zulfiqar can make an apples to apples comparison. Um, uh, instead, what Zulfiqar does is someone charges him a pound, someone else charges him uh, pound twenty-five, and he's like, oh, you know what? That pound guy, look at them. They're ripping us off. You know what I mean? They, 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 they you know, uh, they're more expensive. I'm just going to go with the cheaper one instead of what he should be looking at is where is where where is my money actually making the difference? And, yeah. and so you know that, that makes a lot of sense. And I think um, you know, obviously, bigger scandals are big scandals. But I suppose where uh, a lot of issues arising is probably on the smaller stuff, which might not be illegal or or unethical, but it's more of an expectation issue, like. Somebody who's donating to charity expect a different kind of standard to what the charity is actually doing. Mm. Um, and just being critical, obviously, you know, some of the charities that you know I've donated, for example, um, mm. I remember sponsoring an orphan. Um, I won't mention the charity, but I remember sponsoring an orphan, and they, they send you the pack, and we're gonna give you updated details about the progress of this orphan. Um, and I remember when I made that first donation, I got the pack. They told me about this this child, um, and then you know I. I just carried on donating. It was a direct debit. And then maybe six months or 12 months later, I get a pack, you update, and it's a completely different child. Yeah. Um, and and then... I've had that. Maybe it was the same charity. <laughs> I've had that. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually giving the same example to someone the other way. But anyway, yeah, yeah, carry on. Yeah, you got another... Yeah. So you're going to update to another child. Yeah, this was correct. Years ago. So my in- immediate reaction was like, what is this? Like, I was sponsoring a child what happened to that? What happened to that? Kid? Or is my money now going to this child, or is it going to something else? Or you know, yeah. maybe it's not. Um, you know, I wouldn't say I wasn't. I wouldn't say they were doing any kind of fraud, but maybe. Yeah. So, but, but that, that's that, that's that's a comes. I see that as a purely a, a a comes a transparency issue, right? So if it, it might be that that child, uh, from, and this is with my with my technical or professional hat on. It might be that that child is no longer within the program. We can't get access to that child anymore. The child has moved on. The child has passed away. Allah or well, something has happened where we can't get money to that child anymore. So we've now moved Zulfiqar's donation over to a uh, a similar uh, situation or, or or another child. But the problem here is we haven't told Zulfiqar. Mm-hmm. So Zulfiqar probably wouldn't have a problem with it. But the fact that you've just sent him a random another child pack and 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 the faults that the same faults that went through my mind when this happened exactly the same thing happened to me uh, is when well, I've been sponsoring that kid for the last five years what happened to him you know what I mean it's not he's maybe you know uh, did they turn 18 did they get a job did they you know allow allow um uh, uh god forbid like you know did they something happen to, de- uh, to to them that that when was what happened that you moved and now sponsoring this other kid so so I think the most of these issues, Allah Alam, and this is again just my is that just tell just tell the person, tell them what's happened. You know, that tell Zulfiqar that the reason why you're receiving a different pack from the last pack is because this is what's happened to that kid and uh, or, or, or 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 we think this is a more effective use of your money, or whatever the reason is. You know, what I mean we've lost the kid, you know, whatever. We can't get money to them anymore. That 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 we should be communicating that better. Uh, to that donor base, and um, and I think some sometimes uh, charities just take that for advantage. They they know that Zulfiqar is not going to stop giving to this orphan, mm-hmm. um, and so wherever we send him, it will be fine as long as we send him something. <laughs> mm-hmm. And 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 I think we, you're absolutely right. We do we as a sector, uh, Muslim non-Muslim, same, have to do a better job in in being in, when we make those kind of decisions. That we need to be better at letting the customers and clients know because we are dealing with a different customer base. And so, and I'll, I'll, I'll finish this point on the, on that comment is that there used to be a time where Zufka didn't care about where that orphan money was going to. He didn't care about getting the monitoring report. He didn't care about the thing. He just cared about giving his money away. Like, quite frankly, most of our parents' generation or even the generations before that, we just gave, we just gave, we just gave, and 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 it was just based on that. 
this generation, rightly or wrongly, our generation, you're, you're, you're a certain number of years even younger than myself, we ask more questions. You know, we do. You know, we want to know about the kid. They, you've started sending us these uh, uh, education reports or, or, or performance reports of the kid, etc. If you're going to do that, then you best carry on doing it in a way that pleases Zulfiqar because you've now, again, set this expectation. Um, you know, if 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 you if 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 it was my parent, my mom, she wouldn't probably care um, where that money went to. Uh, but Zulfika does care, and because Zulfika cares, you need to be uh, more uh, diligent in in making sure he gets the information that he requires. Um, and some of our charities just haven't made that leap, like they're still serving people as if they were uh, because they're gonna they know they're gonna carry on giving. Um, but what's likely going to happen is Zulfika at some point is probably going to get cheesed off enough. And he's going to go to another charity. So it seems like that's like a communication issue. But then for charities to put out that kind of communication, they need more resources to hire people or, or oh. have things. In yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. But but I, but I would argue, and we've done this at Muslim Raid, when we revamped our orphan sponsorship program, um, we, we looked at the whole thing from beginning to end again. And then we had to tell the, the, we had to tell the donors that, look, we're raising the price. Of orphan sponsorship by a fiver, I think we had to raise it by a fiver. But because of that increase, here's what you're getting, you know. And um, and we made and, and absolutely we lost a whole bunch of people that said like, yeah, you know what, we don't think it's worth an extra fiver. Um, but alhamdulillah, we the people that did stay and the people that did come on after that point knew exactly what they were going to get for that extra money. So, 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 absolutely, you're right. It does cost more to do things properly or differently. Um, but then again, tell the donor, man. Tell the donor, and 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 if you make a good case for it, most donors. If I told you it costs five pound more to feed your child because um, I can get you a better report, or that child will eat better, or the price of food has gone up, or the price of the education has gone up, or the price of books has gone up, or whatever the reason is. If I told you that. I'm 110% sure most people would be like, that's fine. I understand why you need to increase the prices. So, so, I suppose well, when, when I did raise it with them eventually, I, I got the message back saying the child's been moved by their family. And I wasn't happy with that explanation either because yeah. was, this comes down again to the expectation issue. So my understanding of... Maybe you were just difficult customer, right? <laughs> my, my understanding of an orphan is they've got no family, so first yeah. into a child, now you tell me they moved away from a family, so is this... Oh. I suppose the question is what, 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 how do you define an orphan? Yeah, yeah, usually. Without no. family, is it somebody just has lost one parent? What is oh. the definition of an orphan, I suppose, from, from, is it, is there a standard definition in the charity sector or is it oh. based on each individual charity or... Well, there's, well, there's Islamic definitions for orphans as well, by the way, right? So, so, so I think I think um, I, I believe the Islamic definition is like one parent, right? So, uh, uh, or, um, but yeah, don't don't quote me on that. Like, I think um, uh, we we can you can Google it up afterwards. Um, but 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 yeah, you're, there is no there's no standard. There's no standard, and and obviously, to most people, when someone says orphan, it normally means they've got no family. Um, they've got uh, uh, um, uh, neither mother or father. But um, I, uh, in 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 the charity sector, um, at least with MA, like yeah, it normally meant there is no direct, like responsible person for that for that kid. I you know if if we did not give them money for there's no one the dependent right. So that 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 kid um, doesn't have. Whether it's a mother or father, even if they had a mother or father, but there's no one able to provide for that child in any in any sufficient way. Not necessarily that 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 um, that that child did not have a mother or father, but like like you. But you're right. There's no there's no consistent definition apart from the fact that that child needs support. Um, that that's probably the the lowest um, common denominator in orphan sponsorship programs. Um, so we sponsored, for example, uh, uh, quote unquote children because we don't call them orphans anymore. But, but uh, in our in our program, uh, we call it the community based model, which is basically looking at communities of families that don't have those essential resources because it takes, you know, like they have that saying in English, right? It takes a village to raise a child because it does, right? It's 
you can't just give thirty pound to a kid and, and expect you, you know you need to make sure healthcare is available. You need to make sure the dad is taken care of because if the dad falls ill, the kid is going to be taken out of school and sent to work. You need to make sure the mom can uh, be taken care of because if they can't feed their families, then the the the, the girl is going to be taken out the, uh, out of uh, school and and get married off because they can't afford to feed her. Um, so it, it takes a lot more. Uh, and then you've got the religious side of things, right? If they're Muslim, that ha you know, making sure that they, they get some sort of uh, madrasa uh, uh, fees and, 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 and are, are learning the qaeda or the Quran or, 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 or Salah or whatever, maintaining their faith. So there's a lot of things that come into play. And like I said, I think it's more to do with uh, ensuring that these things are set up front rather than focusing, which is where where we are right now, is... Give us thirty pound a month. Give us thirty pound a month, twenty pound a month, twenty five pound a month, and it just becomes a comparison site by price <laughs> rather than what what is the problem that you're what you the, the the problem that you're actually to actual actually trying to solve. So I don't think that answered all your question properly. Yeah, it, it did. It did. Obviously, it's, it's helpful because obviously you know, like I say, it's, it's an emotional topic. It triggers a lot of people. And uh, before you know, let's wrap this segment up, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But the final point then is um, you know just generally doing some research or seeing what other people have said oh. about charities. Um, linking back to the point we had earlier where, you know, charities aren't businesses, but, you know, there's crossovers. But are certain charities functioning too much like cutthroat businesses in terms of competition? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and on that, I mean, basically, for example, um, I, I remember going to a charity event where they had a celebrity come on and, you know, it was news always going around that another well-known charity were actually annoyed with that celebrity saying, yo, with us, why did you go to that event? No. Um, and these days, apparently, there's uh, certain people are signing exclusivity agreements with, with certain charities that they'll only do events for these charities and they're not for any other charities. Isn't that kind of contradictory to the spirit of, of Islam where we're all together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, look, there's, there's nothing that exactly. I mean, that probably even is even, even, that, that example probably even is not even the worst, right? But the, 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 there are there are absolutely, uh, and, and again, look, I don't think this is exclusive to the Muslim charity sector. So just to be clear, um, when unethical practices go on, like, you know, we were involved with uh, a, a number of charities when we were uh, at Muslim Aid that were bidding on our, our domain name, right? When it, you know, so if you typed in, you know, Muslim Aid, like other, other charities, uh, or two or three charities in some cases would come up before Muslim Aid would come up, and that's because they're directly bidding on the Muslim Aid name, not because uh, of any other reason. Um, and uh, there was an attempt uh, amongst uh, the the sector, and I think they they didn't need to be um, pulled out for their for their attempt at trying to help was 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 uh, Muslim charities form where they tried to get every the, you know the Muslim charities they said look you know what. You shouldn't be bidding on each other's names. You can bid on like words like zakat and sadaqah and stuff like that because this is a fair competition. But to bid on each other's names is 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 not a good idea. And and certain number of charities signed up for it and 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 adhered to it for a while. And then it went. You know, unfortunately, um, some charities didn't uh, adhere to it. Um, and that that could have a massive effect on an individual charity singer, like you said about. Um, celebrities and, and 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 endorsements and stuff um so there are there are there are areas of improvement for sure and 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 the majority of the sector is very good at that i think the the to answer your question though your question um look i particularly don't think there's a problem with what you said as long as you can justify what the response the the return is on that thing so so whether a, char whether a celebrity has signed up with one charity or four charities or ten charities, quite frankly, that's the agreement between him and those charities. From a donor perspective, which is what we're interested in, that as long as you can justify...
but isn't told how much that celebrity is worth to the charity, isn't told how much they raise. All he knows is that that's a big time name and they must have paid a lot for it. Zulfikar and his friends start making up their own conclusions, yeah, that they're wasting money on this celebrity. But if the charity, in response, done a better job of saying, by the way, you know what, off the back of that guy or woman, we raised X amount, 10 times, 20 times, 30 times what we paid for that person, suddenly Zulfikar is like, ain't got an excuse. Then he's like, okay, yeah, that's that's that actually makes sense. But again, when we don't communicate that back out to the donor base, the donor base is going to fill that space with their own their own, their own um, uh, assumptions. Um, and rightly so, quite frankly, I don't blame them for doing that. If I'm going to, um, uh, you know, if, if I told, uh, yeah, uh, uh, they're going to make their own assumptions. And I think that's the problem. They're not, I personally don't have an issue with using celebrities to raise money. Um, we've never done that at MA just because that wasn't really amongst our kind of like our, our forte. But um, for charities that do go down that line, just make sure you tell donors what the return of that, that celebrity is. Otherwise, donors will come to their own conclusions. And normally, like yours, <laughs> they're not they're not good ones. <laughs> but, but, you know, but, um, but yeah, I don't blame them for that because we haven't told them any different. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and, and so obviously there's a trust issue then. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Therefore, then, that the charity sector needs to maybe transition into a, a blockchain model where, yes. you know, all the transactions are anonymized but are made public so everybody knows where the money is going, how it's being spent. Yeah, very good point, man. No, very good point. I think, I think, um, so I'm just going to take time. Yes, or, or is that too much of a transition for that? Like, no, 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 no. I don't think it is. I, I look, I think coming back to the the point I made earlier, I think we're dealing with a different donor base that we're dealing with 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And our charities have to, unfortunately, move with that in mind. Zulfika is not the same as Zulfika's mom, dad. Zulfika's mom and dad were not the same as their mom and dad. We're talking about a different donor base. Um, and because we're talking about a different donor base, um, our charity sector, especially our charity sector, needs to be looking at what that donor base wants. That donor base is increasingly asking for more transparency on a donation level of where their money is going. And one of the ways to tackle that, absolutely, is is incorporating new technologies like, like blockchain, where it's not enough to uh, just tell Zulfikar that, look, your money has gone into this bigger pot of money that's gone into this bigger pot of money and that money is going to go to Palestine, it's going to go to Sudan, Somalia, etc. But Zulfikar wants to know when it's going to go to Palestine, when it's actually left the coffers of the charity and gone into the the hands of the individual beneficiary. When is that food pack moved? When is his food pack moved from uh, 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 the warehouses of the charity into the actual uh, camps? Um, of the of the beneficiaries or the individuals receiving that thing, and because that requirement is becoming increasingly so from the target audience, yes, I I I I I, I, I am constantly in discussions with charities uh, and donors. Quite frankly, they are saying, "Oh, why don't you implement blockchain so that we can see?" Like even when you're showing them pictures, now I was sitting with a donor the other day, and uh, and a charity was showing them pictures of food parcels that they distributed in a certain country. And that donor turned around and said, how do I know that's mine? <laughs> like, like, that could be anyone's picture, right? That, that, that could be, and he was, and, and, and as, as crazy as that sounds, they're absolutely right, right? You can't, you know, you can say, oh, man, that's a bit, you know, um, whatever. But, but they're right. Like, I, you can't prove that that particular food parcel was yours. And, and. And our donors are increasingly becoming, um, uh, yeah, more more uh, demanding of, of of things like that. And one of the ways that we can solve those and implement those things is is by using technologies like like blockchain. And I think, um, or I'm, at least I, I think I'm hoping that um, there there will be uh, maybe a, a a working group or a group of charities that come together and look at how they can uh, put resources. Uh, together to kind of come up with a way that that can be maybe shared or the technology can be shared across the sector um, so that we can tell Zulfikar exactly when his donation 
arrive to us? When did it go out to the country? And and finally, when when it actually got to the individuals on the pots? Um, uh, uh, there are some charities that are taking money through things like crypto, um, so you can donate crypto. But that's that's obviously not the same thing as tracing your donation to the to the end. Mm, brilliant, brilliant. Okay, that's been fantastic. I mean. Oh, conscious of the time, like I did have so many more questions and so many different directions to go, maybe in another episode. Um, but you know, thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing your uh, experience. Uh, what do you do now then? And, and how can people contact you and who should contact you? I uh, just have to have for the opportunity, first of all. And uh, and look, it's been a great conversation. And yeah, these conversations, because like we said, they are quite connected to, to, our, to our own beliefs and, 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 and areas of of uh, of passion, I guess that 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 you can take them for as long as you want to take them, inshallah. But yeah, absolutely happy to to pick them up at another time. Um, what do I do now? So so um, I've I've continued to work in the charity sector, uh, and 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 you'll be happy to know I didn't go back to corporate. But um, that uh, what I do at the moment is I advise uh, basically um, a, 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 what we call strategic philanthropy. So um, uh, helping. Uh, family offices, uh, in some case charities, government institutions, but um, I'm focusing my efforts mostly on family offices, uh, family offices, high net worth individuals, however you want to put them, um, to basically look at how we can give our money away more strategically, how we can make uh, a better impact with the donations that we're, that we're giving. Um, uh, what we're seeing is that, uh, alhamdulillah, we've got a lot of wealth, a lot of, of money that, that is in the Muslim Ummah and, and, and our communities, especially in the West. Um, but uh, we don't treat that money the same way we do, like, for example, in an investment portfolio. If, if I gave, if someone said to you, look, look you know, give me some advice on investing a million pounds, um, and uh, you'd go through what the returns, the due diligence on, on, on where you're investing that money, making sure you're not going to be taken for a ride, making sure that you get the good, better returns out of that money. But what it seems like is, uh, uh, on the whole, that we don't give the same level of, 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 of respect when it comes to giving away charitable money. And 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 when I say some of the foundations that I'm I'm, I'm working with, are as big as any, are as big as most of those Muslim charities that we're talking about. You know, individually they're giving away uh, more in some cases than some of these charities. So uh, you can imagine that if we can, inshallah, advise. So I support these family offices to to legally, properly, strategically uh, um, uh, influence them in a way that 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 these are going to causes that are both aligned with their own intentions and, and what they want to do as a family, um, set their own legacies, etc. But also where they might be able to make the best impact in that area that they want to give um, and what it would take to make that impact. Um, and put some evidence behind that giving to make it more effective, then then the change, in my view, the change might end up coming from these family offices, maybe might be bigger than, than anything the charity sector has done uh, to date, J um, uh, just because it's easier for them, they're more nimble, they're more flexible to move mm. um, uh, uh, and support causes uh, that they're thinking. So, yeah, that's what I do. Um, uh, I do some executive coaching, as I mentioned, as well as some mentoring. Um, I, I enjoy doing that. You know, it's it's a way to make sure that we have more effective leadership in the sector uh, going forward. Sharing your uh, sharing uh, our experiences with up and coming leaders. So um, uh, you can uh, make inquiries on the website. I've got uh, www.ethicallimited.com. I think you're going to put it in your in your thing as well. Um, so there's a contact us form there, uh, but yeah, that's what that's what we're focusing on. Where we just want to make sure people are giving or try to support people giving in a in a much more effective way, uh, so they can see the change that they want to see and uh, um, and yeah, coaching the next next uh, generation of leadership in the sector. Inshallah. Inshallah, brilliant, love it, and um, thank you for that. So, we're gonna sign off now. So, any last words for people struggling with their minotaurs? What advice would you give them? Um, have faith, uh, uh, trust yourself, uh, uh, be brave, you know, no, nothing changes, nothing changes until you do something different, you know, that you, the, uh, the, the old agile, adage goes, um, you need to be brave to make, make decisions to move on, um, and if you're making those moves, 
with the right intention, if you're making those moves with uh, 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 consideration of others in mind, uh, as well as yourself, uh, then God will facilitate your path and he'll make you successful. Um, but if you're going to carry on thinking about it and stress about it and not make a move, then unfortunately the situation is probably not going to change either. Uh, so be brave, do something different um, and do it with good intentions, inshallah, and, and, and uh, it will work out. I'm 100% sure of it. Brilliant. Well, that piece of advice. Once again, thank you very much. As for the viewers, I had this happy <laughs> time. Uh, I hope you found it insightful. Um, thank you very much. Any comments, leave it in, in, in below and we will see you on the next episode. Take care now. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Assalamu alaikum.